There is a place that is spoken about only in whispers. A dark area that spawns the beginnings of urban legends. A place where anything can happen and usually does. During the light of day it hides just outside of you. But when the sun goes down, spirits, creatures of the night roam free and things do go bump in the night. It is in every state and every country and there is no escaping it, no matter how safe you feel behind your locked doors and latched windows. So we invite you to turn down the lights and turn up your radio while we join Dave Schrader and Tim Dennis, your hosts, on a journey into the darkness on the edge of town. Good evening, everybody, and thank you very much for sticking with us for Hour 2 of Darkness on the Edge of Town Paranormal Radio Show. Got a good show lined up for you here for the second hour. And again, for those of you that are just tuning in, if you missed out on the interview with Lauren Coleman, the cryptozoologist and best-selling author, you can uh, check out that be probably on our website. What do you think, by tomorrow or Tuesday, Tim? I'd say tomorrow. Tomorrow, the uh, archives of the show will be up there, so you can tune in and check out that show. As Our archives are always up, and if you uh, can't tune in with us live, we're glad that you're checking out the archives. I do uh, want to make a couple of quick announcements. Again, as I mentioned in the top part of the show, Waverly Hills tickets are on sale. We're going to be going out with only 100 people. And our celebrity guests, John Zaffis, Adam Bly, Rosemary Allen Guiley, Chris Fleming, and Patrick Burns, along with Chad and Adrian from Terror Normal, and your good old buddies, Timmy and Dave from uh, Darkness Aww. on the Edge of Town Radio Show. We'll be out there investigating Waverly with you for two nights. That's right, for once, Dave and Tim get to go investigate with you. So... You can watch us run like little girls down the hall when we see something roll and spook us. So be there with us. Check it out. Uh, We're going to have a great time at Waverly Hills with Charlie and Tina Mattingly. And they've opened their doors to us. We're going to actually be holding the event at Waverly during the day. So we'll be there in the daylight. And as it goes dark, we'll be there to investigate. So we hope that you'll join us. You can find out more information about that trip and all of our upcoming trips at darknessevents.com. And again, please make sure that you tune into our good friends, uh, Jason and Grant. They are every Saturday night from TV show Ghost Hunters. You can check them out. Uh, they're on WPRO, 630 AM out in Rhode Island. And if you Google WPRO, you should be able to find that link and it'll take you there. You can tune in with them and they are on from 8 to 10 every Saturday night Eastern time. Join in and listen to them talk about the paranormal and their experiences on the TV show and uh, delve into the world that we're all so interested in. Now we're going to go forward a little bit. Uh, you know, I, I help credit one of the people, or I shouldn't say help credit, but I credit one of the uh, uh, conferences that I attended two years ago into helping spur me into getting into this field and getting into the radio business again. And uh, that was going out to Univcon 4 where we went out uh, and actually got to meet with, uh, that was my first face-to-face meeting with Jane Grant and and uh, meeting Rosemary Ellen Guiley and John Zaffis and so many of the other fantastic speakers there. And, uh, you know, they're great speakers. They were a lot of fun. They were great to see the celebrities. But i got to tell you, some of the hardest-working people and some of the best speakers that I saw were the group uh, from Penn State Paranormal Research Society. And uh, Ryan Buell and Topher and Sergi are all with us this evening. Good evening, guys. Thanks a lot for joining us here. Yo, what's up, Dave? Evening, Dave. Good evening. Hey, Dave, how you doing? Doing great. I'm glad you guys could join us. Yeah, you know, I've I've loved your events. I went out to it two years ago. I had a great time. That literally was in October. By uh, December, Tim and I were working on having the Paranormal Radio Show on January 1st. We were on the air. Uh, no, uh, you know, that, that was all thanks to your guys kind of spurring it on and being such good uh, supporters of us and getting the show going and helping us out. And last year was another phenomenal event. A lot of great speakers, including Lorraine Warren, was out there. Uh, You've got another great show for us in mind tonight, and I want to appreciate you guys for coming on the show and, and kind of breaking some news. So why don't we start off with Unifcon 6 news so we can uh, let people know what's going on. Yeah, sure. Well, um, uh, this is Ryan, by the way. Um, I want to go down. Oop, we've lost you, Ryan. Yeah. Sergi, are you there? I'm right here, uh, Dave. Let me give the phone back to Ryan. Okay. Hello. Hey, Ryan. <laughs> hey, I don't know what happened. It just turned off as soon as I started talking. Someone doesn't like me. Oh, God. Um, the spirits are out there, man. <laughs> um, well, first of all, you know, as I was telling you last year, we really wanted to shake things up. We really wanted to change things. So um, we put a lot of thought and we put a lot of effort into this year's Unifcon. Um, and, and we're still changing a few things. But, um, I mean, where do you want me to start? Do you want me to start with the lineup? Yeah, go ahead. Tell us okay. what's going on. Who's going to be there? 
Well, um, I'm really, really excited about some of these people, but uh, I'll start, you know, usually we start on Thursdays, and uh, this year it's going to be October 18th to the 21st uh, of 2007. And Thursday is usually like a preliminary, you know, usually people show up on Friday. This year we're getting an entertainer, like someone in the horror field to come and speak, and we haven't lined that up yet. On Friday we are having Lorraine Warren return. However, she's going to be speaking with somebody who has who has been trained by the Vatican. He's a Roman Catholic priest, but uh, we can't say any names just yet because we're still in talks for getting this person. Um, but she's going to be pairing up with with this high-ranking official uh, on Friday and speaking about demonology. And as you know, there are a lot of people who are interested in demonology these days. Definitely. And we all know that Lorraine Warren and her and her late husband Ed were the biggest demonologists, and, and arguably still are, name-wise, out there in the field today. Um, so she's returning to talk at Unifcon, and she's bringing somebody who uh, very rarely speaks. Um, then on Saturday... This one I'm really excited about. We have a guy who has retired, and uh, he, he's written one of the most definitive books in the paranormal field. Um, the author, John Keel, who wrote The Mothman Prophecies, sure. is coming out of retirement to have one last talk, and he'll be speaking at Unifcon 6 Saturday night. Um, before a live crowd, he'll be taking questions, he'll be talking to people, and he'll be preparing a short le- lecture. He's, you know, he's in his late 70s, so he's not going to be speaking too long, and he's not going to be staying too long. Um, he'll be there Saturday and Sunday. Um, and then, of course, Sunday, um, we are bringing back Jason and Grant, and uh, I do hope that J- or Grant, uh, I do wish him a speedy recovery, because I did hear about his illness today, um, but they will be returning on Sunday, and usually they speak on Saturdays, but this year we want to close out the conference with a bang, and they've agreed to, to close it out. Awesome. Well, that's a great lineup. Now, oh, you yeah. also Let's hear, you've also got uh, Keith and Carl uh, Johnson, the demonologist, will be there as well doing a, a class, right? Oh, absolutely. What we do with UNIFCON is that we have, um, we have what we call tent pole or keynote speakers, which mm-hmm. is one every day, and then we have, a, you know, which I think is very important, are the workshops. And with the workshops, we have, you know, Patrick Burns returning of Haunting Evidence on Core TV, mm-hmm. Chris Fleming, who um, was on Biographies, Dead Famous, um, Keith Johnson, who uh, has actually worked on our show Paranormal State, will be returning, Michelle Boulanger, we have Lloyd Auback lined up. We actually have a few, um, we're trying to get a little bit more academic this year, and we've actually lined up a few people. One of them is uh, Dr. James Hufford, who wrote, I guess, one of the most definitive books on sleep paralysis, um, which is, you know, Hagging Syndrome, people know it as. Um, he's actually a Penn State professor, which uh, we didn't know that until just last year, but wow. he's going to be speaking. Um, there's a few other people, a few ufologists. What we're trying to do is we're trying to diversify UNIFCON. And, you know, there's, there, there's people who come from all over the place and want to learn about different things. So we're trying to actually structure the workshops to where if you want to know a lot more about demonology, if you want to know more about ufology, any of these subjects, there's going to be certain workshops that you could take in and that you can schedule yourself for to learn about a specific topic. Great. Are you going to have, uh, are you going to have any other authors out there this year? Oh, absolutely. I mean, we're still, I mean, the list goes on and on, but, you know, being that it's only May, we're still, we're still in talks with some people to kind of, you know, I guess finalize things. You know, we're still talking with Rosemary. We're talking with some people over at Fate Magazine. Great. So, you know, we're all really excited. Great. Well, and again, you know, if there's anybody uh, that we can help uh, locate for you, we'd love to help you out and, and get, some, uh, get some more speakers out there. We know quite a few people in the UFO, UFO world and... Uh, cryptozoological world and everything and and i gotta tell you we do get so many great emails from people that are happy when we go off the ghost subject and talk about these other aspects of the paranormal because they they're so interested in all facets of it so i'm glad that you guys are able to bring an event like this as well that will handle so many different versions and so many different topics absolutely now are you going to be uh breaking any exciting news at the event maybe about a certain new tv show that we should uh, (laughs) expect to see or what well, A and E is going to be doing something. Um, as you know, they, they they offered a really quick preview, or I guess just a little bit of hype. We had we hadn't even begun filming the show last year when they they gave out T-shirts and posters. And they put together a trailer, um, but this year um, they they're planning something big. Um, I personally don't know what what they're all doing um, because they're they're still working on the show. 
and everything like that. And, you know, we're, we should know more information by next month. But I do believe that they're probably going to offer some sort of sneak preview, uh, maybe even a screening uh, to cool. get people's feedback, what, what they think. You know, I, I hear a lot of people on... Um, when, when people talk about the show, and obviously no one's seen it yet, but a lot of people say, oh, you know, a and trying to rip off Ghost Hunters, but the show's nothing like Ghost Hunters. And that's, that is no, nowhere near an offense to people who like Ghost Hunters. I like Jason Grant. I've known them since before the show came out. But this show is very different. We take it in a whole different direction. We really focus on the clients and their problems, the people who are being haunted. And we focus on, like, the mystery of what's happening there with them. And anyway, it doesn't matter if, if they're if they're being haunted or not. We try to focus on helping them, and um, I mean that's really what our show's about. And I think that uh, when they showed a little teaser last year, I think people got to saw a little bit of it. But um, I, I think this year we'll really do something to show what we're about. And the la- show, last the show year they it. handed out T-shirts. This year I hear it's going to be uh, Ryan, Sergi, and Topher bobbleheads, <laughs> and then a poster of all three of you dressed like the Chippendales. Am I right? <laughs> No one told me about this. <laughs> well, the show, I mean, this is all exciting news. You guys are, are making a bigger event each and every year. You're coming at us with different uh, different speakers, different things that are going on. And uh, now tickets are officially going to go on sale when? Tickets are officially going to go on sale on October, or I'm sorry, October, on <laughs> May 17th. Okay, May tickets 17th. Tickets are going on sale. May, now the website's going live on May 10th. So okay. there'll be seven days where people can see a whole list of workshops, speakers, the event. And I know I haven't even told you this, Dave, but, you know, um, we, we, you know we obviously, like you said, that, you know, you've been inspired by UNIFCON. And, you know, same way right back at you, you know, we've had a lot of fun on this show. And this is, I really think that your show has also helped us grow. So we want to do something special for people who are listening tonight and might be listening on the podcast. We are going to offer a limited edition of tickets to, that are going on sale right now to Darkness Radio listeners. They can get tickets a week and a half early. Very so cool. anyone who's listening now or on podcast, until they sell out, they can get them. Okay, and how can they go ahead and, and order those up? They can go to... Now, we had to create an external link. This is not on the website at all. This is made just for Darkness Radio. They can go to Unifcon, U-N-I-V... C O N six, like the number six dot eventbrite dot com. That's E V E N T B R I T E dot com. And these are gold passes. And last year gold passes sold out within twenty hours. Right. Well this and, is great. Uh, so and we're offering we're offering twenty gold passes to darkness radio listeners. These are exclusive, these are they're not even on sale yet. Awesome. Well, we so, appreciate that. and uh, No problem. When we go to our first break, I'll try to put that link up on the site so people can go in there and start ordering for them right now. And uh, now let's talk a little bit about the, the people that are involved in your group because, you know what I said, you, you get a lot of the tentpole speakers, and they're great, you know, C&J and Grant and, and Patrick and Chris and, Ro, you know, uh, Rosemary and all these other speakers. But some of the, the best speakers that I really enjoyed were, you know, uh, the, the cast of PRS, you know, I mean, your, your talks on the paranormal and investigations were great. I enjoyed listening to them as much as I did any of the other celebrities that were there. Um, you know, uh, you at that time, we're working with a psychologist there that was uh, doing talks that were great. And um, you've got Elfie who was doing uh, programs on magic. And I mean, so many of you had so many different topics. And then the ones that didn't do talks, man, were you guys busting your butt behind the scenes to keep things rolling. And that's amazing. And I know that's guys like Topher and Sergi who are the quiet guys, uh, at the event, but they're they're making sure everything's happening and 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 flowing smoothly for it. But uh, you definitely got to you know come on out because the the amount of information that you get at these events are phenomenal, and uh, they're, everybody's so down to earth and so kind. And it's just you know I, I can't say enough about you guys and how great you've been uh, doing. Let me let me ask each one of you if if you're all still with us on the phone now, Topher. You know we've had Ryan on in the past and and gotten some information from him. Topher uh, Topher Young is one of our guests on the line with us from Penn State. Topher, what got you involved in the paranormal yourself? Um, I think as with most people, it's really more personal experience. Like growing up, I've it's been a fascination, but it's always a personal experience I had that really got me interested. Uh, now it's become more so a passion now that I found the organization Penn State Paranormal Research Society since I got involved with them. It's just been it's been just so much fun doing the conference, uh, now the T V show and so many different things. But uh 
it would have to be personal experience that really got me interested in this. Uh, is there any type of personal experience that you've had that you can talk to us about, or at least maybe something uh, that you've experienced <laughs> since you got involved in the field, if you don't want to talk about your your private uh, you know, experience that got you into it? I mean, I've had some good ones. I've had some bad ones. Uh, I think the main thing with me now is I question a lot of what I've experienced. But the first one, probably my very first experience I had was when I was about five. Uh, and I just recently told my mom this. My mom's never heard this. And I was just talking to her the other day, and she is actually starting her own paranormal group now, too. But uh, I was younger, and we are all taking a nap. And uh, I remember waking up to hear my, my name being called. Uh, and for those of you that don't know my full name, it's actually Christopher. Topher is just the last half. Uh, but I heard, like, I heard a really, really loud, Christopher. And it, it woke me up. And I was like, all right, I sat up. And being five, I'm like, yeah, what? And everyone's, everyone was pretty much asleep. So I laid back down to go back to sleep, and I heard it again. It was even louder, and it woke me up even more. Uh, so I got up. I'm looking around the house. There's no one there. And I happened to find my brother, my younger brother, just eating cigarettes. Like, I don't know. Uh, but that eating was one of the cigarettes. first. Exp- yeah, eating cigarettes and playing with matches. Uh, but that was my first experience that really kind of, like, stuck with me. I was like, I have no clue what it was. I can't explain it, but I know I heard it because wow. so, it woke me up twice. But that was my first experience. So, Wow, very interesting. Now, is Sergi on the phone with us? I'm right here, Dave. Sergi, tell us a little bit about, no, first of all, introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about what got you involved in the paranormal. Honestly, I, I don't even know. I think it was the the lack of friends in the freshman year of college. <laughs> um, <laughs> or, or you heard the Penn State PRS guys got all the hot chicks. Is that what it was? Yeah, that's actually what uh, they were advertising for me. Um, you know, join this club and get all, get laid all the time. Excellent. Yes. yes. <laughs> we knew the paranormal was good for something. But, but what it was for me, I, I, growing up, I was always striving to go for something different and unique, and I didn't really know what it was. You know, my um, my parents always pushed me to do kind of business stuff, which I kind of went along because uh, I was really good with numbers. But it, it was the office job was it wasn't for me. It wasn't what I wanted, and um. When I, when I was in my freshman year and uh, sophomore year in college, I actually started going to, like, road trips. I just got in my car and I went to, like, some random place at midnight, you know, just to see if I can not fear, be afraid of the dark. I, to be honest, I didn't even know what I was looking for. So I would just drive around and I would stop in the middle of nowhere and get out of my car and see how long I could wait out there in the middle of darkness and, you know, not be afraid. And... It was just like I would be watching the Travel Channel, the History Channel, all about this ghost stuff, and I kind of wanted to experience it, you know, firsthand. And that's when I first came into University Park, and I saw that they had a paranormal club, and I was, you know, why not? Let let, let me just join it and see what they have to offer. And little did I know that they had a lot, a lot to offer. (laughs) No doubt. What What would you say? I mean, of of the years that you've been involved in this now. Have you seen, in your opinion, definitive proof of the paranormal? I honestly, I have. And it was actually, believe it or not, like right after the first two investigations that I did with PRS. Um, Dave, and I'm sorry if, I, if we get cut off, the battery's running low. So That's right. Topher will ha- might have to uh, take lead for a while while the batteries <laughs> get charged okay. up. <laughs> So what uh, what happened with the investigations and the things you've seen pop up? What would you say is probably the most definitive piece of proof that you've seen, Sergi? Uh, it sounds like we lost and him. And we lost him. All right. Well, <laughs> go ahead and pretend you're Sergi and tell us, stuff. <laughs> well, uh, well, let's see. Uh, when, no, well, you, you've was, been involved I in investigating. And, and, uh, yes. <laughs> no, but you've been doing the show as well and, and out there. Now, before the show started, uh, yourself, Topher, were there moments when you thought, Holy crap! What this is amazing, you know, or or did it not happen until the show when you saw the first sights of paranormal activity that that really blew you away? And by the um, way, for everybody listening right now, if you go to our website at darknessradio.com 
and uh, go to the listen or uh, to the show tab and scroll down underneath the picture of Ryan, Sergi, and Topher. We now have a link up that says special offer to Darkness Radio fans. Tickets are available for you only for the next week and a half. That's a week and a half before anyone else. Click here to order. So the link is up. Feel free to go there, link, and uh, buy your gold passes right now. You'll get them a week and a half before anybody else, and the gold passes sell out quick. So make sure that you want to join in, and if you want to take advantage of that, this is what you're going to have to do to go get those. So with that said, we'll go back to you now. Go ahead, Topher. Uh, I was actually just going to say, I'm actually not in the first season of Paranormal State. I'm, I do a lot of the back, behind scenes stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've been really focusing on really promoting Unifcon this year. So uh, when we go to the break, I'll try to get Ryan and Sergi back on the phone. <laughs> uh, but uh, a couple things that Ryan wasn't able to mention, just so I know there's people in a para-investigators chat right now. Right. Uh, one of the people in there uh, is Chip Coffee. Sure. <laughs> Uh, just so everyone knows, we're doing something a little bit different this year. Uh, we're actually going to have a host of Unicon, kind of like an MC or a DJ, and we have none other than Mr. Chip Coffee actually, who's going to actually host the show this year, which we're really, really excited about. So, Chip Coffee is going to be hosting Unicon Six this year, which is going to be completely awesome. Very cool. Um, and for those and, of you that aren't familiar, Chip is a um, sensitive medium. Uh, we've had him on the show in the past. We talked to him about the uh, murder of John Lennon on an article that he wrote for Haunting Times magazine, uh, and we've had him on in the past as well. Uh, so, yeah, he's a, he's a phenomenal guy, great character, great personality. So it's going to be uh, just come for his personality alone. He's, he's a wonderful guy to, guy to be around. And he's actually going to be uh, featured on a few episodes of your show this year as well. Is that right? Yes, yes. Uh, Chip Coffee has helped out a lot with uh, several of the shows with uh, Paranormal State as well. That's one of the reasons why we decided to have him. He, he's a he's an awesome guy. Like overall, he's just like you said, he's a tremendous and wonderful guy. So we like, yeah, we when we have a host this year, and we're like talking around, well, who should we have? And we're like, what about Chip Coffee? And we're like, yeah, that's it. So we we called him, asked him. And he's like, absolutely. So we got Chip on board with us. He's going to be helping us with this year's conference, but. Uh, Doing, I mean, there's a lot of buzz going around with the conference. Like, I get a chance. I'm the publicist of Unicon. I'm, most people probably have seen as many bulletins as you can possibly shake a stick at online with me posting about Unicon and stuff like that. But there's a huge buzz. There's so many people always like, when's it going online? When's it going online? Uh, so if you guys, anyone gets a chance, go to www.myspace.unif backslash Unifcon. Check out our website unifcon.org. It'll be going live again May 10th. Uh, but, uh, I mean, this conference is going to be amazing. For those that have never been to a conference before, this is like the top dog of conferences. We've had other speakers last year. Uh, I'm not going to name them just so they don't get in trouble, but they've been to other conferences, and they just outright just tell us ours is one of the best ones they've ever been to. So, Excellent. And you've been there, Dave. And oh, yeah. So you you know all all about the conference, and for those that have never been to Unifcon, Dave is hilarious. Well, thank and, you. Uh, <laughs> yes, and late night dinners at Denny's and stuff like that. And Dave also has very magical powers about just waving his hand and getting a limo to drive up in front of us. <laughs> so. Yes, we were out walking last year and needed a ride to Denny's, and uh, I waved, and literally a limo pulled up. So we are good with that. <laughs> But we're going to take a quick break here, Tover, and then we'll come back with you guys. You're listening to The Darkness on the Edge of Town Paranormal Radio Show. Stick with us. We'll be back with more right after this. It will keep you on the edge of your seat. I must have drank me about 15 Dr. Peppers. I got to pay. Just don't get any on the floor. Hurry back. There is more to come from The Darkness on the Edge of Town. For 58 years, fate has consistently supplied its loyal readership with a broad array of true reports of the strange and unknown. Fate is a factual magazine containing articles by experts in all walks of life and by others just like you who have something dynamic, significant, and truthful to say. Keep up with the latest on angels and miracles, psychic phenomena, ghosts, UFOs, archaeological hotspots, alternative science, and much, much more. To receive your free Fate magazine, call now at 1-800-728-2730. Or visit our website at www.fatemag.com. That's 1-800-728-2730. Or www.fatemag.com. What are you waiting for? Your fate awaits. 
Are you tired of reading about what couple in Hollywood is breaking up or divorcing? Have you ever wondered where you can find the news that covers the subjects that you are really interested in? I would like to invite you to visit SupernaturalNews.com. Supernatural News uses the latest internet technology to search for the topics we know you will be interested in reading. News of the latest Bigfoot, UFO, or Loch Ness monster sightings. Read about the latest conspiracy theories and urban legends. Supernatural News, where belief and reality merge. When Dave was a young boy, he once awoke to find himself staring directly into the eyes of a shadow person. Turns out it was just his life-size cardboard cutout of Donny Osmond. Go away. Welcome back to the darkness on the edge of town. Well, good evening, everybody, and thank you very much for tuning into the show. As uh, you just heard, we were talking to the gentleman from Penn State PRS, and you can check out the information at their website at Penn, P-E-N-N, State, P-R-S, P-R-S dot com. Is that right, Topher? That is correct. I also have Ryan back on the phone with us now. Hey, Ryan, glad to have you back with us here. (laughs) New technology, man. You got to use these phones and have batteries at work with them, guys. <laughs> well, uh, I don't know what happened. It's weird. We, had, we thought they were charged. It's funny. It's funny. Well, see, it's paranormal activity. It's the batteries that go first, right? I know. There I know. Yeah, I know. Well, we've got the <laughs> we've got the link up on our site, and uh, we're ready to to roll. And anybody that's interested, why don't you explain to them again, real quickly, Ryan, what they can get by going to that link and, and pre ordering their tickets? Why don't you tell them what comes with the gold ticket? Well, with the gold ticket, and, and, and Topher and Sir speak up if I, if I miss anything, um, what we try to do is we try we try it last year for the first time, offering a gold pass, and which is kind of like a premium over a, um, a regular ticket. And uh, with the gold passes, you know, you, you can skip lines, you can you have reserved seating because obviously these events they get packed very fast. Um, you can you're guaranteed for a ghost hunt. There's a dinner that you get to attend, where Jason Grant and some of the other speakers attend. Um, it's pretty much for people who want to spend, a, who, who are willing to spend a little bit more money to get something a little extra. Because the way these of, the Unificon is, is that we sell hundreds of tickets within like the first week when we go on, online. And, and then overall, we have hundreds upon hundreds of people at this conference. There's no way we can pack hundreds of, upon hundreds of people at every single event. So we came up with a way of, okay, well, We'll offer a premium and then the, then, then the regular package, which is the silver, and the gold is the premium. So for people who want to spend a little bit more, but they get a little, you know, a lot more, they can get a gold pass. And right, with the gold passes, that you know, gets you into the bathing suit competition as well. Is that right? <laughs> Serge, why don't you take that one? <laughs> well, Dave, actually, I'll be leading this year's bathing suit competition. Excellent. I'm working out really, really hard. <laughs> I, I hope it's that uh, long buttoned-up one that you were wearing last year. That was awesome. <laughs> well, well, guys, you know, we wish you all the best. Tell me a little bit about, can you just at least give us a little information on the show? I know you can't tell us too much more on that, but when when are we expecting sure. to see this hit the air now, guys? Well, the, originally they were talking summer, but summer just became too packed, and to be honest, they wanted to take their time with, with marketing the show, and sure. I honestly believe them. Um, and, and they have some great ideas on how to market the show. They're really going to take their time and promote this. And um, so they, they just realized, you know, we just finished filming, so a June release just isn't feasible. Right. Um, the show is it's a half-hour-long show. It's a docudrama series. Um, it's shot a lot like a movie. And honestly, I've seen a bunch of cuts, and they look like X-Files episodes. Um, and it's pretty much us. We go out and investigate strange cases. We, we talk to the owners. We try to get, we understand the story. We try to communicate with the spirits. We'll bring in forensic experts, um, morticians, police officers, journalists, whoever can help us investigate this case. And, um, but the most important thing, the, the stars of each episode are the people who are being haunted. The people who are experiencing a haunting, they're the real stars of the show. And, it's, it's, and what you see on there, the emotion, the, the pain, the agony, you know, the horror on their face, that's all real. And we're, we're just going in there, we're just trying to figure out what the hell's going on. And offer up some kind of help to, to get them out of the situation they're in, right? Oh, absolutely. And, and, some, and some of, you know, one, a couple of the episodes this season, nothing really happens. Um, you know, we kind of just, we feel like there are logical explanations. And so we, we try to coach Wait a minute, through logical that. explanations in the paranormal world? No! Blasphemy. <laughs> Get out the sticks, Tim. we got to hit him with sticks. 
Well, guys, we're looking forward to the show. The name of the show has been changed from uh, Paranormal You. It's now actually called Paranormal State. And i got to tell you, I'm, I'm consigned to a bunch of uh, news uh, services like Google News and Yahoo News and uh, got keywords like Paranormal and Supernatural in there. And it seems every other day I've got a new article about uh, A&E's hit new show, Paranormal State. So I, I wish you guys the best of luck with that. I hope things uh, go really well with the show. And, of course, if they do, you know, we're going to be seeing you hopefully out at our uh, live events that we do as well with the, uh, the the shows and having you there. And, of course, Univcon is going to be even bigger and better having the uh, celebrities from Penn State's uh, uh, Paranormal University or Paranormal uh, State right there at the event as well. Uh, is there anything else you guys want to part with us here before we uh, we say goodnight? I don't know, Topher. Is there anything else I'm missing? Um, I... Basically, I just want to really thank all the the past guests. I mean, they've been really like supportive yeah, about Univcon. I mean, they're so excited about this year's conference that I think they've been promoting it more than I have. Uh, they've been telling like every one of their friends, and they're like, "You have to come to this year's conference." So, I definitely have to give a shout out to all of our past guests who've just been so supportive of this conference. And it seems like when we get new new guests here, that's why we seem to double in size every year. Every time we get new guests, it's they're so awestruck by our conference that they, they feel, I guess they feel obligated or compelled to actually just promote it and just tell everyone about the conference. So, well, Like I said, I think that has a lot to do and credit to you guys for being so down-to-earth and so friendly. People want to help you because uh, they like what you're doing and they see the good work you're doing for the field of the paranormal and bringing people together and unifying them as opposed to uh, a lot of the problem, which is fracturing in the paranormal field. It's good to see groups uh, like you and Darkness Radio putting events together that help bring people together to share their passions. Absolutely. Yes. I, I definitely agree. But, I mean, overall, I mean, this year, I guess to sum it all up, we promised, you know, just completely educate them, you know, entertain them as well as outright scare them. So. Awesome. <laughs> Well, Ryan, Sergi, and Topher, thank you guys so much for joining us here. Uh, we appreciate the uh, opportunity to talk with you about Univcon 6. And, again, everybody go check it out at MySpace backslash Univcon, and you can get all the information there. You can also check their website at PennStatePRS.com or go to our website at DarknessRadio.com and uh, click on the Show tab for those of you listening to the podcast version. There is a link up directly underneath the pictures of Ryan, Sergi, and Topher that uh, will allow you to order your tickets a week and a half before anybody else for the gold tickets. So you're going to want to do that. Guys, much continued success in the uh, future here. Keep us in mind with any new uh, stories that are breaking, and we'll look forward to seeing you out in October. All right, man. Thanks a lot, Dave. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Bye-bye. And thank you all for tuning into The Darkness on the Edge of Town. We're going to take one more quick little break here, and when we come back, we've got our good friend Patrick Burns on the line from the TV show Haunting Evidence, which uh, looks like it's going to be launching again back in June, and we're going to talk to him about his fantastic event that's going to be coming up in uh, October as well, which is Ghost Stock. So stay tuned. We'll be back with more right after this. All right. We're having a little technical difficulties. I guess uh, the guys at Penn State's uh, phone systems aren't the only ones getting a little weird tonight with the paranormal activity. So we're going to go back uh, to the live lines. We've got Patrick Burns on the line. Patrick, thanks for joining us tonight. Hey, how you doing, Dave? Doing great. I appreciate you coming out and spending a little time with us here. And I uh, want to talk about some of the exciting things going on in your world. Boy, you guys have got uh, how many more episodes now coming up for... Uh, Haunting evidence. You know, um, I fly out of Atlanta here in about 10 hours to film our final episode for season two. And then that's uh, 14 episodes in the can, and we'll be premiering uh, June 20th. June 20th. TV. Awesome. Now, can you give us a little flavor? Can you tell us a little bit about some of the, the amazing uh, events that you're going to be you know, doing with I, this? You know, I did that. The last time I did that, I got spanked. I got my hand slapped, oh. and I'm not supposed to talk about this stuff. Um, ahead of time. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Other than I will say we were in Aruba filming an episode back in February. That's about all I can say. And uh, obviously, you know, people are, are probably going to be able to deduct uh, what case we're talking about uh, when, when Aruba comes to mind. So wow. um, that's going to probably be our So that's our a pretty high premiere. profile. Yeah, that's a pretty high f- profile case as well. And yeah. I won't say anything if you're trying to keep it there. Yeah. Um, keep it that way, but uh, that's exciting stuff. And you've got 14 new episodes starting in June. 14 new episodes starting June 20th. Now, are they um, rerunning the uh, first episodes as well? Uh, they have been on and off. Um, they'll you know, rerun them for a couple of weeks, and then they take us off the air, and then they do like a marathon, and you know, I, I think they're kind of building us up for, 
for the new season. They don't want to keep running the same nine episodes from season sure. one now, over for those and over of, again. Yeah, for those of you that are living in a cave, you know, the, the real sign that the paranormal is here and here to stay is a brand, uh, you know, is the fact of all the different stations that are jumping on the bandwagon. And when you yeah. realize now that, you know, you've got, you've got your CBS, Ghost Whisperer, NBC, uh, Medium, CW's got Supernatural, you got your buddies on Sci-Fi Network, uh, Jason and Grant with Ghost Hunters, Dead yep. Famous on Biography Channel, Most uh, Haunted on, um, what is that, the Travel Channel or Learning Channel? One of those Travel two. Channel Travel Channel. in the States, yeah. Right, and we've got all these things, but Court TV actually stepped up to the bat. They've got two paranormal shows on. What, what's with that voice all of a sudden, Tim? they got two, two, they got two. two, <laughs> two par- they got uh, psychic, <laughs> or, uh, psychic detectives, right? Yep. And right. then they've got haunting evidence, and this is a cool twist on a on a really unique show. What they've done is they've got two uh, psychic profilers. They've got John Oliver and then Carla Barron, who mm-hmm. go out to uh, areas without any background information, um, just very basic rudimentary information. Patrick knows most of it going into it, and he does the paranormal investigating while the psychics kind of feed him information, and he can actually document if they're getting right or wrong answers and what they can put together for the show. And they're trying to, what they're doing is they're reopening cold case files, correct? And yep. trying to help maybe shed some new light or look at a new angle on something that maybe the police or somebody may have missed in the past. Sure, yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I, I'm quick to point out, Dave, that, you know, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm there set up with, with all of my electronics. You know, I've got cameras running, I've got temperature sensors, and I'm basically looking for what we believe to be any paranormal occurrences, any paranormal events going on while John and Carla are doing their interpretations to maybe, you know, be sort of a, uh, a hint, you know, a nudge from the other side saying, hey, you're on the right track here, keep, keep on that path. And, um, yeah, it, it is definitely a very unique uh, twist on, uh, on, on uh, paranormal programming. Like you, uh, you had mentioned, um, Psychic Detectives on Court TV was, uh, I think they're in their third or fourth season now, actually. They've, right. they've been out there for a while, and uh, we were kind of designed from the ground up to be a companion program to Psychic Detectives. The, the major difference is that those are all cases that are already closed, um, where the authorities actually enlisted the aid of a psychic or a medium, and they actually got tangible results that helped them solve the crime. Um, But the difference is everything that they do on that program is reenacted. These are cases that are already closed. Um, Haunting evidence, on the other hand, is sort of the psychic's first brush with these cases, you know, uh, going on location to these places. And that's really been everybody's... uh, big big complaint about the show i mean a lot of people have told me you know i i love the show but you know there's it, it's a cliffhanger every episode is right. a cliffhanger and I, <laughs> I i keep reminding people you know you're comparing us to psychic detectives you don't know how long those cases were open in some year you know some cases it was probably you know several years before they they got a you know a, a conviction and uh you know closure on these cases so give it time Right. Give it well, time. You know, Lauren Coleman, who was our first guest, we were talking about Bigfoot in the first hour. He said that we're such a, you know, a, a immediate gratification country now. You know, we want immediate results. So, oh, but, absolutely. but there is some. I mean, you can you can't give us any of the uh, the specifics. I know because the cases are are still under investigation. But right. there has been some lids taken off of some of the cases you've worked on in the first nine episodes, right? Yes, there have been. And there's um, there's some results happening from that. So there are some results that are going on, and I I, I can I can say this because it is public knowledge. I I mean, anybody can go out there and plug her name into into Google. Um, Katie Sepich, which I think she was the fifth episode of season one. Um, for your listeners that have seen the show uh, that uh, might remember, uh, she was the uh, co-ed from New Mexico. She got into a, a fight uh, with her boyfriend at a party one night and walked about five blocks home, uh, highly intoxicated, unfortunately, and she realized when she got home, she left her keys. She basically stormed out of the party, left her keys and all her belongings at the party and tried to break into her own house. And uh, somebody passing by through her neighborhood happened to notice, you know, this attractive young woman, you know, outside, obviously disoriented, and took advantage of the situation, raped and murdered her on the spot outside her own home. Mm and then took her body into the desert and set it on fire to basically try and um, obscure, you know, the, evidence, the crime right, to right. D- destroy the evidence. 
um, her parents had a very controversial law. Actually, they were able to actually recover DNA uh, evidence from her body, and her parents had a very controversial law passed in New Mexico that they refer to as Katie's Law, and this requires anyone who is merely charged with a violent felony to submit a DNA sample. And um, John Oliver had actually indicated in his um, his reading, he said he believed that the perpetrator of this crime was going to be caught in the commission of another crime. And that's actually what happened in this case. They, um, they had this guy in prison already on other charges, and they ran his DNA sample against the database, and they found a match to, uh, to Katie. And when they confronted him with this, he confessed to the crime, and um, there's, there's been closure now. Of course, John and Carla, we were not, our, our program was not directly involved in that, uh, but I am told that John's composite sketch that he described of the perpetrator of this crime was also dead on accurate. So I'm, I'm sure that they're, they're going to be um, you know, re-editing that episode and, and doing, doing a, 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 follow-up? You know, a, a follow-up, which is what everybody has <laughs> right. really been asking for. They're like, Where, when are there going to be follow-ups? Well, there will be. Can so, I ask you, Patrick, doing the show, now, you know, law enforcement people are very proud you know they're 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 very proud in what they do, and I'm sure getting mm-hmm. a cold case really pisses them off too, because it's got to be just driving some of these guys nuts that they can't oh, yeah. crack these cases. Do you ever run into, and you don't have to be specific which which law enforcement agencies, but do you ever run into attitudes from the law enforcement agencies of people that are just not happy that you guys are messing with their cases? You know, um, we really haven't had anybody. I, I haven't detected that in any of the any of the uh, the cases that we worked with. Um, I have seen instances where um, we have extreme skepticism, right. you know, borderline cynicism. You know, well, we don't believe in psychic abilities, but we're going to do this because you know we might get a uh, um, you know a hit on the case by somebody seeing the TV show. We do deal with that. Um, most of the time, we're only going to take on cases. Uh, first off, one of the stipulations is we're not going to do any of these cases without agreement from the families. Okay? Right. We, we are sensitive to the families, and, you know, if, uh, you know, when, when our, our production company contacts somebody, they, they say, you know, if you're not interested, we're not going to harass you. You'll never hear from us again, but here's, here's the concept of the program. This is what we're doing. Um, we'd like to profile this case on the show. Um, and then the other stipulation is we like to have law enforcement in, involved as well mm-hmm. um, to, you know, kind of, if nothing else, just sort of feed us what they know, what they're able to disclose to us. And it's really interesting, Dave, because it runs the whole gambit um, of, you know, we, we do deal with, you know, the cynics, and then we also deal with, you know, the, the people in law enforcement that have actually worked with psychics in the past and have, you know, gotten tangible leads on, on the cases that they work, so they know that there is something to this. How um, do you, when you came into this field, now you've worked in the paranormal field for how many years yourself? Well, I started Ghost Towns in 2001, but, uh, you know, I, I actually cite my, uh, my first investigation actually dating back to about 1989. Okay. When you when you got the offer to do this show, were you reluctant at all to do the show because of the, the connotation of working with psychics is is really strange. Either people really like it, or they think you're out of your tree for working with a psychic. Were you concerned about your credibility at all working with psychics? You know, I, I was, Dave. When when they said when they, they they pitched the premise of the show to me, you know, about how we're going to be working with a psychic and a medium, I was like, oh, you know, well. You know, I definitely believe that there are people that have these abilities. Mm-hmm. But then I, I also believe that there are a lot of people that wish they had these abilities and think they might have these abilities but really don't. Right. And then, of course, you also have the uh, Miss Cleos out there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what <laughs> you are, talking about, boy? What you talking about, Ma? <laughs> it's in the car. <laughs> you know, there, there, there are charlatans out there. There are, um, you know, wannabes out there. But I think there are also, uh, you know, a handful of people out there that are legitimate. 
you know, maybe more than a handful. I mean, I, I think everybody has these abilities to some degree or one, you know, mm-hmm. to, to some degree or other. Um, everybody's had precognition. Everybody's had deja vu. Um, you know, but... I totally knew you were just going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> See? That's um, what I'm talking about, Dave. <laughs> well, but, so, uh, now, you, for, for people that want to check out your website, it's ghost. Hounds, H O U N D S dot com. That's right. I know yep. when we say it fast, it sounds like ghost towns, but it's actually yes. ghost hounds yeah. dot com. Think of a ghost dog, a ghost bloodhound. What was that? Uh, Goober and the Ghost Chasers. That's who you yeah. need as your mascot. There that, you go. That could be. Goober could and be. the Ghost Chasers. Um, <laughs> well, we've got uh, we've got uh, ghosthounds.com. You can go get all the information. And you've got some exciting stuff coming up, too, don't you? You've got some uh, conferences. You're going to be out at that uh, Southern I, California event. I'm doing something event. with this, this, this outfit called Darkness Radio at the uh, at uh, Waverly Hills. Oh, yeah. I heard about that. Yeah. That that's sounds exciting. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> You're also going to yeah. be with us out at uh, the Queen Mary. Oh, uh, yep. That's I cool. sure am. That's cool. I, that's that's uh, my my favorite location in the world. I mean, no. we we did that back in January, and I'm I'm so stoked that we're going back there. What uh, have you had the chance to be at Waverly yet to do an investigation? No, project? I have not. I've never been to Waverly Hills, and everybody is telling me that I am in for a treat. Yeah, we just had some friends that went out there and came back, and the stories I'm hearing are unreal. Yeah, I know uh, Chip Coffee and and uh, his his group they they did a they did a trip out there. Uh, I think what two weeks ago. Two weeks ago, right? And they actually uh, Shay, a good friend of ours, saw a little ghost boy when one of the flashes from a camera went on. There were yep. shadows walking around. There were footsteps following people around. Yeah, just, sounds just crazy insane. active. Yeah. So we'll uh, we'll be looking forward to getting out there, and again, that's in August. We're going to be doing that event. But let's that's talk a little August. bit about uh, your event. Now, you you host an event twice a year. Twice a year, it's called Ghost Stock. Uh, oh, you know, think, and let's mention one other thing before we we get to that, so we okay. can make sure we mention it as well. Um, you are going to be making an appearance at the uh, in uh, July at the 2007 South Coast Paranormal Convention. You're also going to be out at Dragon Con in Atlanta, Georgia. And that's yep. over Labor Day weekend, correct? That is. That's okay. true. So I just want to make sure everybody knows where they can locate you. But if you want to go to the definitive Georgia Paranormal Retreat, you got to go out and you got to see uh, Patrick at Ghost Stock. And one, again, I'll shut up and let you kind of explain what Ghost Stock is. And, and, and this nope. is now Ghost Stock 6? This is Ghost Stock 5, actually. 5, okay. Yeah, yeah. we do it twice a year, so uh, we're, we've are we been running this now for about two and a half years. I think you should call it Ghost Stock 6 in, Ghost Stock six. in search of Ghost Stock 5. Ah! Just, just to confuse everyone. That's right. Wah, 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 wah. <laughs> hey, what happened to Ghost Stock 5? I don't know. Why didn't you go out and look for it? We're going to investigate that on <laughs> Ghost Stock 6. All right, so Ghost Stock 5, and tell us what, what goes on at these events as well. Ghost Stock 5... Um, is uh, we hold it twice a year in Savannah, Georgia, which, according to the American Institute of Parapsychology, is supposed to be the most "quote unquote" haunted city in America. Um, it's one of the few cities in the Southeast here that was not burned by General Sherman during the Civil War. So the buildings actually uh, predate the Civil War, and in some instances, date back to colonial times. Um, and you've got to figure, you know, a, a, a city that that has that kind of history is going to have a lot of time to amass a lot of energy. They call Savannah the, the city that was built on its dead because basically they the cemeteries were always placed on the outskirts of the town, and as the town expanded, well, they decided that they had to build on the cemetery. So this place is, is crazy active. I mean, every other it seems like every other uh, building in the historic district of downtown has a ghost story associated with it, and that's not an exaggeration. Right. And we do this conference in Savannah twice a year, and we have uh, we have speakers, we have vendors, and the uh, the high point of what we do is we actually break break all of the attendees off into small groups of no more than ten people, and we send them out to different locations around the city to go and investigate. And we do this on Friday night, and we do our reveals on Saturday night at the convention. Uh, people, you know, sort of spend all day Saturday reviewing their footage and looking uh, for for evidence of, of what they came up with. Um, so we're actually, you know, we're, we're kind of unique from uh, that perspective in terms of paranormal conventions. You know, there's a lot of conventions out there that do this sort of thing, but... 
um, you know, actually having the teams go up and, and do reveals at at the conference is is kind of unique, and uh, you know, I'm very proud of Ghost Stock uh, from that respect. And uh, you know, Savannah is just an amazing town. If if anybody is is looking for a uh, a haunted uh, getaway uh, this fall, actually, we're going to be doing this uh, October 25th through the 28th. It's actually Hallow- Halloween weekend. So, um, you know, it's it's just a, a whole lot of fun. People can find out all the information they need to know at ghoststock.com, G-H-O-S-T-O-C-K.com. Um, the server is not up right now. I'm actually doing a server re- reinstall on that. So, you know, if they want to check it out in the morning, uh, it should be back. But um, it's a lot of fun. Everybody has a great time at it. And uh, we're hoping to see you and Tim there this October as well. I believe you will be. Good. I believe you Very will Very good. Yes, Tim and I are going to sell Girl Scout cookies to earn our way to Savannah, <laughs> Georgia. So, yeah. yeah. So, no, we're, we're doing our best. I know I'll be out there. I don't know if Tim will because he's uh, the hardest working man in paranormal radio. He works about <laughs> eight different jobs and plays in 14 softball leagues oh, and geez. still manages time to, uh, you know, teach um, the blind to read. Wow. I lied about the last it's, part. It's tough, but I get it done. <laughs> That's right. Uh, so this is going to be your fifth event. Do you know who you have lined up for speakers yet for this event? Uh, right now, we're uh, we're still taking submissions for uh, people to come and speak. We do have one very high profile uh, speaker on the bill already, and that is Dr. William Roll. Oh, sure. And yes, yes, Dr. Bill Roll, who um, uh, has been a parapsychologist since 1951. Okay. Right. <laughs> it's it's just incredible to actually you know have him on on the bill with us. He um, is the one who investigated the Columbus poltergeist case uh, here in in Columbus, Georgia, uh, that uh, occurred back in the 1980s. Uh, Tina Reich was uh, the name of the subject, and uh, anybody who who isn't familiar with it, I'm not going to take up your time. Uh, they can go on and uh, you know go go plug her name into Google. I think it's uh, R-E-S-C-H is how her last name is spelt. Um, but it was one of the most documented poltergeist cases um, ever recorded and, uh, it, you know, uh, appears to have been spontaneous telekinesis. And Dr. Roll was the parapsychologist uh, who investigated that case back in the 1980s, and he will be talking about that. And uh some of the other cases he's worked. He's actually, uh, Dave, believe it or not, he, um, I don't know if you saw the Queen Mary episode uh, from uh, Unsolved Mysteries, where they recorded the sound of the um, the metal twisting down in the cargo hold oh, in right, front of the right, ship. Right, sure. Yeah, that was Bill Roll who uh, who actually made that recording. Oh, wow. Yeah, back, back in the 1980s. So, um, very cool. Yeah, I'm very, very excited to have him on, uh, on, uh, the roster for uh, uh, for Ghost Stock Five, but uh, if ever, anyone else has any other suggestions for guests that they think would be interesting or uh, you know a, a good fit for Ghost Stock, we're we're still taking uh, um, applications right now, and uh, we'd love to hear about it. Great. Well, we'll do that. We'll help direct you to that as well. And then uh, you know, I wanted to mention real quickly, Patrick and I had an interesting uh, event happen, and I wanted to kind of fill Patrick in on this as well a little bit more. About a week ago, I was online working late at night as I often oh, do, yes. and one of my friends popped up on my chat and said, Dave, I'm, I'm really feeling uneasy. I'm home alone, basically. Uh, I just feel like there's something weird around me. And I said, well, snap on your webcam, <laughs> which sounds so pornographic when you say it that way. Yes, it does. <laughs> but she turned on her webcam, and we were just talking and blah, 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 blah. And uh, at one point, I saw what appeared to be the back of like a curly head curly haired head lean in front of the camera and I said oh who, who's that and she said who's what and I said I see the back of somebody's curly head and she and her eyes got huge as she looked up at the camera and she said stop effing with me Dave I said I'm not I see this and then all of a sudden it darted away so you know I I thought maybe she was just jerking around with me and we were chatting for a little bit when all of a sudden and this is Patrick the first if it's true full on apparition I've ever seen into the room walks this woman and my friend Stacy's typing away to me, and this woman walks in, and, and she kind of stops and then turns and looks at the camera, and she kind of stoops like she's trying to get in frame, and she begins to walk towards the camera. 
and then sits down at the chair kind of off and behind my friend Stacy. And I, yeah. I and as I'm chatting, I go, who is that that just came in the room? And she looks up at the camera again with this holy sh- face and says, <laughs> Dave, there's nobody here. And I said, come on, Stace, there's, she's sitting right next to you. And she goes, stop screwing with me. I said, I just watched her walk in the room. She's got short, dark hair, glasses. She's wearing a black shirt with like a white button sweater. And she's sitting in the chair next to you. The look oh, on God. this girl's face was priceless. I felt so horrible for her. But she looks over at this chair, and I'm watching him. It's, you know, as a man, you want to protect your female friends. And I feel so horrible for her because she's sitting there all alone in this room, and there is a full-on apparition sitting next to her. She, and I, I, at this point, think she's still jerking with me when she reaches over and grabs the, the lamp off the desk in front of her and swings it at the chair, and it was gone. Well. So I call Patrick, and I wake his poor butt up at about <laughs> 1 o'clock in the morning. I'm like, Patrick, get on and log on to my friend's camera. But she has told I know, me I'm, since I'm then. I'm thinking, yeah, exactly. The pornographic thoughts are going, Patrick, <laughs> go, 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 go view. Uh, hey, we're going to have an online three-way. Like, yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> but uh, we—you got to meet her. She's a very nice girl, very down to earth. Um, yeah, she is. And we were—we were, we were chatting. She has told me that since that time, she's had things. Something came in her room and started to pull her sheets and blankets off. Uh, she has had other things going on. So, Patrick and the I. The next have, darkness radio event needs to be at Stacy's house. Yes, That's no doubt, it. no doubt. Um, <laughs> but she is able to videotape it. Patrick walked her through, so she's going to actually have her camera on. Patrick and I are going to try to check in from time to time, see if we can catch something, and if we do, we will talk about it on the air. Absolutely. And show the footage. But I still get the creeps just thinking about it, Patrick, watching that thing walk into the room. But you were a, a great guy for coming on with us out late and sitting there and ghost watching with us. Oh, no with problem. Us. Yeah, I, I'm just bummed that I, I missed it. You know, all, all the all the fun stuff happened. Uh, well, she said know. it continues, so I think we're in for a, a treat if we just keep checking it out every couple of weeks. Absolutely. But, uh, Patrick, thanks a lot. And, again, for people that want information, they can go to ghoststock.com. Yep. And if they want to just uh, hook up and talk to Patrick Burns, you can reach him at ghosthounds.com. And, of course, both sites are down right now while he's working on maintenance for them. So uh, if you're listening to the podcast, you'll probably be able to check it by Monday or Tuesday this week. Absolutely. Patrick, thanks a lot for coming on and sharing with us tonight about uh, about Uni- or I'm sorry about uh, Ghost Stock. And uh, you are going to be out at Univcon as well. Yep, I'm That's looking right. forward to it, Dave. So, boy, you're going to be all over the place this year, I'm sir. I'm a busy bee. It's the year of the pat. Well, Patrick, thank you very much, and thank you all for tuning into the Darkness on the Edge of Town Paranormal Radio Show. We'll be back again with you next week with a brand new show. Make sure you stay tuned. Tell all your friends about us. We're here every Sunday night from 10 to midnight Central Time at www.darknessradio.com.